What is going on everybody? In today's video, we will be breaking down the best draft values that I'm currently seeing in 2024 fantasy football drafts. I have drafted dozens of fantasy football teams so far throughout this offseason. I've done dozens of mock drafts with our amazing subscriber base, and it just seems through every single round, there's one or two players that I just think are tremendous overall value. So I'm going to pick one player for the first eight rounds of fantasy football drafts and tell you guys who I think is the best overall value. If you guys are new to the channel, this is all we do here all year long, free fantasy football content, redraft dynasty and best ball. If you guys are into that, be sure to subscribe on the way in. Other than that, let's hop right into today's video. All right, first on the list, I'm going to go with A.J. Brown in the first round. He currently has an ADP of 8.8 .8 on the Underdog app and then an ADP of 9.7 on the Sleeper app. And I just think overall, like, you know, A.J. Brown, uh, maybe because he's on the Eagles offense, which some people feel down on going into this season because of how things ended last year, like, People just kind of have A.J. Brown in this area where they're just not giving him any respect for what he did last year in fantasy football, where he was the wide receiver five and full PPR. And not just that, I mean, he was literally on a historic pace to start the regular season in terms of his receptions, receiving yards. I mean, he was just on an incredible overall pace. And if you take that away, I mean, he was on an incredible fantasy football pace okay you look between weeks one and week nine that first stretch before the eagles had the the bye week in week 10 he only gave you single digits once in minnesota week two at home 6.9 points and week one at new england wasn't fantastic but he still had 14.9 fantasy points right but other than that right i mean double digits in every single one of those games except for week two like i said and he had a ceiling of 38.5 fantasy points in week four. I mean, literally, when you look at the PPR scoring here, 22.1, 38.5, 18.7, 20.1, 29.7, 33, 19.6, that stretch was incredible. The second half of the season, change at offensive coordinator after the bye week, uh, you know, a bummer week at Kansas City in week 11, 1 1.8 points, but then 14.7, 19.4, 16.4, 10.6, 14, then 9.3 really bad game in week 18 at the New York Giants. We won't even talk about that, but still that's just three games where he had single digit fantasy performances, five games where he still got you double digits overall, a great season, 17 fantasy points per game. I just don't think he's that far removed from that kind of top tier wide receivers that we're seeing being selected earlier in the first round. And I just think overall people are down on AJ Brown for no reason. Getting him at the end of the first round is an absolute steal. He's still going to be a phenomenal wide receiver one this year. So starting your draft with AJ Brown at the end of the first round, still going to be very good for you. I think he's the best value in the first round of fantasy football drafts right now. All right, next up on the list, we have another wide receiver. That's going to be Nico Collins of the Houston Texans. Finished as the wide receiver 12 in full PPR last year. Under nine targets, 80 receptions, just under 1,300 receiving yards, and eight receiving touchdowns through 15 games. Did miss two games last year. So when you break that down, single digits in just one, two, three, four games that he played in last year. Every other game last year, double-digit fantasy performances, a ceiling of 35.8 fantasy points. Now, some people kind of down on Nico Collins right now. Okay. He's got an ADP of 17.5 on underdog. He's got an ADP of 28.2 on the sleeper app. And I think the main reason is obviously Stefan Diggs is now on this offense. Tank Dell did miss a significant amount of time last year. He also, I think is a tremendous value where he's being drafted in drafts currently. So I think the combination of those two things, like we're expecting to get a fully healthy Tank Dell. And now you have Stefan Diggs in the miss mix, excuse me. And Speaking of mixes, Joe Mixon is going to be part of this team. He's probably going to vulture some touchdowns in the run game. So overall, there's just kind of feeling that maybe Nico Collins shouldn't be a second rounder. But I think the Houston Texans arguably could be the best in this. I definitely think they can be one of the best offenses in the league next year. So I think they're going to score plenty of overall offensive points next year. I'm not worried about a potential regression in this sophomore season for uh, CJ Stroud, which is now one thing that some people are starting to say they think might happen. Like maybe we need to kind of, you know, push the brakes on CJ Stroud after that great rookie season. But 
I'm all in on this Texans offense. I'm willing to take Nico Collins just about anywhere in the second round, you know, but especially at the end of the second round where draft after draft, I see Nico Collins kind of falling in that area. And I've been smashing the draft button on Nico Collins literally all off season long. I have plenty of shares of him and underdog. I've drafted him time after time again in our mock drafts. And I just feel good about Nico Collins. I think he's a tremendous value. There's other wide receivers, especially at the end of the second round that I like as well. But Nico Collins is a guy that has just stood out for me all off season long has really become one of my guys. So I think he's a tremendous value. I'm not afraid to draft him. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All right, next up on the list, you guys knew this one was coming. I got Derek Henry for the third round. I got an ADP of 29.7 on underdog and ADP of 27 overall on the sleeper app. If you guys have been following the channel this off season, you've heard me talk about Derek Henry. You know, I'm super high on Derrick Henry was the RB8 in fantasy football last year in his last year with Tennessee. Now he goes to the Baltimore Ravens. I don't understand why this has some people scared. I think he's a perfect fit for this offense. I don't think he should be going in the third round of fantasy drafts, but I will allow it because I want to continue to be able to draft Derrick Henry at a cheaper overall price. But just think back to last year, Gus Edwards, 13 rushing touchdowns in this offense. Lamar Jackson had five rushing touchdowns. Keaton Mitchell had two rushing touchdowns. And then Justice Hill also had three rushing touchdowns. So there's plenty of rushing touchdowns to go around here. I hear the argument like Lamar Jackson's the quarterback. He's going to take rushing touchdowns away. I hear the same thing with Jalen Hurts and Saquon Barkley, another running back that I'm really high on. And it's just like, the rushing touchdowns will be there, especially if we're just focused on this Baltimore Ravens offense. If Gus Edwards can hit double-digit rushing touchdowns in this offense, there's no reason why Derrick Henry is not a lock to also score double-digit rushing touchdowns in this same offense. So I think the Ravens, a you know another team that's one of the best offenses in the league last year, I don't really see them regressing this year. Derrick Henry is the clear workhorse running back. Yes, he's age 30. Someone out there is going to say, well, he might get injured. Anyone can get injured, okay? Devon A. Shane is going in the same range, right? He is coming off his rookie season where he was injured off and on throughout the season. People aren't scared to draft Devon A. Shane for the most part. He's a you know really flashy name around this area in drafts where people are like, ah, I don't feel so good about Derrick Henry. Just stop it. Derrick Henry is going to be a beast this year. I think he is the best value in the third round currently fantasy football drafts all right next up on the list we've got hollywood brown of the kansas city chiefs who has an adp of 52.6 on underdog where wide receivers a little bit more prioritized since you are starting three wide receivers he's an adp of 77.5 on the sleeper app so much later now i will say if you're drafting you know doing mock drafts through the sleeper app and you can get him that late do it but with the mock drafts that i've done so far this offseason Recently, with our subscriber base, Hollywood Brown is not going at that ADP in PPR mock drafts. He's simply going a round or two before that, unless like people don't scroll down far enough and he, he slides every now and then. But overall, people are still going after these Kansas City Chiefs wide receivers against their ADP, whether it's Xavier Worthy, Hollywood Brown, or Rasheed Rice. Fantasy managers are not scared to draft these guys. Underdog, he's going at 52.6, which I, at this time of year, really believe is the strongest indicator of where the sharpest overall drafters are drafting fantasy football teams. All that being said, if you guys have followed the channel this off season, you guys know that I'm high on Hollywood Brown. He's one of my most drafted players in underdog fantasy. I think, you know, him having that veteran experience as a wide receiver coming into this Andy Reid offense, he is going to be able to kind of get an edge against Xavier Worthy, who I still like. But I just think overall, Hollywood, as long as he stays healthy, is going to be a very, very dynamic player in this offense. He's going to have a great connection with Patrick Mahomes. I also like Rasheed Rice at his ADP. I think he's being kind of slept on. People are overly worried about the suspension and forgetting that he's probably going to be very consistent in fantasy. I get the upside of Xavier Worthy. The time I'm recording this, we're like two days removed from Xavier Worthy catching that incredible pass in training camp from Patrick Mahomes. So I get it. I like all the Chiefs wide receivers. I think this might be the best offense we've seen out of the mahomes Reed era. I don't think that's crazy to say. It looks great on paper right now. Hollywood Brown overall, I think for the most part, will fit in great as a wide receiver one in this offense. And overall, I think he's just due for the most potential 
upside and has the best overall chance of staying on the field. So I will continue to draft him time and time again in the fourth round. I think he's a tremendous value. All right, moving into the fifth round, I'm going with Rashad White, who currently has an ADP of 63.6 on underdog and an ADP of 40.5 on the sleeper app. Listen, I'll just put it this way. Whether you're getting him a little bit earlier, if you're doing PPR mock drafts, half PPR mock drafts on you know, the sleeper app, if you're doing underdog drafts, you're able to get him in the fifth round. Sometimes I see him fall to the sixth round, wherever it may be. Fourth round or later, I think Rashad White is a amazing value, okay? I just don't understand why, you know, nobody's talking about Rashad White finishing as the RB4 in full PPR last year, okay? Rashad White was one of my most drafted running backs going into last season, and he's going to continue to be one of my most drafted running backs going into 2024, especially at the price he's going. 990 rushing yards, six rushing touchdowns, fine. Good enough for a sophomore season. We like to see that thousand yard mark, but he barely missed it. But here's the big thing. 70 targets, 64 receptions, 549 receiving yards and three receiving touchdowns. When you break things down last year, single digit performances for Rashad White four times every other game, double digits with a ceiling of 279 fantasy points, 15.8 fantasy points per game. Rashad White was a stud last year. And I've talked about this throughout the offseason as well. I'm not worried about Tampa Bay's offense, okay? I know, uh, you know, Dave Canales is now with the Carolina Panthers. Offensive coordinator has left, but I'm not worried about this offense. Baker Mayfield, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, Rashad White, even an underdog drafts late round, Kate Otten. Like, I am in on all these guys because they all have good overall ADPs based on what they did last year, but Rashad White especially is the player that I want plenty of shares of, especially if you go zero RB. If Rashad White's your first running back, beautiful. If you go kind of light at running back to start, he's your RB2. Once again, beautiful. Right now in the fourth, fifth, sixth round, wherever you can land him, I think he is one of the best overall values in all of fantasy football. All right, moving along to the sixth round, and I'm going to go with Deontay Johnson. Now, the Carolina Panthers has an ADP of 71.8 on underdog and an ADP of 93.7 on the sleeper app. But once again, I'm seeing him, for the most part, go a little bit earlier in PPR mock drafts than 93.7. But he is still, for the most part, going around that range of guys like Calvin Ridley, Ladd McConkey, D Hop. But I think, for the most part, you're going to see him selected before most of those guys, similar to Christian Watson, whose ADP is 101 on sleeper, like Deontay Johnson, Christian Watson, two guys that I'm seeing being drafted against sleepers current ADP. We'll see how things continue to progress. But if you follow the channel throughout the offseason, you guys have heard me talk about Deontay Johnson. He's in line to be the wide receiver one for the Carolina Panthers. Adam Thielen flourished to start the year as a wide receiver one in fantasy for the Carolina Panthers and Deontay Johnson should come right in and do an even better job. Okay. Deontay Johnson is a good receiver. Okay. He's been in a bad situation with a bad quarterback. And now you might look at the Carolina Panthers and say, okay, like what's your point? He's in another bad situation with another bad quarterback, but we just talked about Dave Canales, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Dave Canales did tremendous things last year. For Baker Mayfield, for that Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense the year before, he did very, very good things for Geno Smith, the Seattle Seahawks offense. Maybe, I'm reading too much into it, but I just don't think there's any reason to not believe that the Panthers will not improve this year offensively, that Bryce Young will not improve this year offensively, okay? Deontay Johnson, just a good, consistent type player that you can land later in drafts. 11.8 fantasy points per game, but you know the major thing to look at here is that he only played in a total of 13 games last year, 717 receiving yards, five receiving touchdowns. So he did all that off of 51 total receptions. Not so bad, right? And at the end of the day, I always say it, bad offenses will still produce good fantasy football players, especially in full PPR. So at the range you're getting him, don't be worried. Deontay Johnson is still a great value in the sixth round or later. All right, next up on the list, moving into the seventh round, we've got Zamir White currently going at an ADP of 86.8 on underdog and an ADP of 83.7 on the sleeper app. And a lot of people right now, 
I think it's kind of split 50 50. Like a lot of people are like, yes, Zamir White is going to be a workhorse running back next year. And then some people are looking at it like, I just don't like the situation. Don't like the Raiders offense. There's other guys here. They drafted a rookie running back. Like I hate Aiden O'Connell. I hate Garner Minshew. Like this team is doomed. Listen, <laughs> when Zamir White took over as the RB1 for the Raiders last year, 17.5 fantasy points, 14.5, 15.6, 13.1 in those four games. He was a true workhorse running back, 17 or more touches in each of those games, and that was just rushing alone. And he did pretty well in the receiving game as well. Actually, he was able to you know make the most out of some of those targets that he got as well. So overall, we know that the offensive philosophy for the Raiders is going to be give the running back a lot of touches. That's not going to change this year, especially with who we've got at quarterback, right? Zamir White is literally an RB1 that you are drafting as an RB3 or 4 sometimes. I mean, it just depends on your build, right? And especially if you go zero RB and you're a hero RB and Zamir White's your RB2, like, I don't mind that whatsoever. I really think as long as he stays healthy, and he is a young running back at age 24 going into his third season. Samir White is due for a good fantasy season. I think the ceiling's incredibly high here, but multiple double-digit fantasy performances is certainly not out of the question. So don't get too caught up. Once again, bad offenses still produce good fantasy players. Don't get too caught up in the offensive situation here. I think Zamir White, where he's going in draft seventh, eighth round, wherever you may be able to land him, overall, a very, very good value. Last but not least, let's talk about the eighth round. Let's talk about Dak Prescott, currently at an ADP of 95.5 on Underdog, an ADP of 75 on the Sleeper app. And I've seen Dak Prescott really go all over the place in both mock drafts and Underdog drafts. So his ADP is kind of up in the air, I would say. And sometimes, you might see him drafted pretty late and other guys like Kyler Murray, who people feel have has more uh, rushing upside, excuse me, which I do like Kyler. Guys like Jordan Love, who also had a very good fantasy season last year, go before Dak Prescott. So sometimes he gets pushed a little bit further back. But guys, I mean, it, it's just like, listen, I think the Cowboys are in a weird place okay and yes we also had the thing with the walking boot and everything people started to freak out and his adp has been weird but i do think the cowboys are in a weird place right you know they still haven't got uh the cd lamb thing done dak prescott's looking for an extension michael parsons on the horizon what is this team even like i i don't know they're in a weird place as an organization right now and some people are just like, the Cowboys are doomed. Like, I don't want pieces of this. Or and then other people are like, Lamb's going to be fine. Prescott's going to be fine. It's just a weird overall feel for the Cowboys offense right now. But at the end of the day, this is the same exact offense as last year. Okay? C.D. Lamb's still the wide receiver one. Brandon Cooks is the wide receiver two. Then they just have like a kind of misfit room of the rest of the wide receivers on this team. Jake Ferguson's at tight end. The offensive line isn't any better, any worse than it was last year, which, by the way, it wasn't very good last year. Then the run game, like Tony Pollard wasn't even that productive last year. So I'm not that worried about Zeke and Rico Dowdle being the, the main two options here. I don't think it's going to really impact this offense. So listen, if the defense is worse this year, then that doesn't really hurt things fantasy wise because this team is playing from behind. So I don't know. People, I think, are thinking too much into the Dallas Cowboys situation and forgetting that Dak Prescott was the quarterback three in fantasy football last year, and they were lighting up opponents left and right last year. Now, it is a tougher schedule this year in comparison to last year. They do have some tough stretches here, but I still think at the end of the day, where we are drafting Prescott he will pay off at his given value. I still think he's a lock for a top 10, top eight quarterback finish. I don't think top five is even that crazy to say. Okay, He's got all the weapons he needs as long as nobody holds out, which I don't see happening. Lamb's here. Cooks is enough at wide receiver too. That was proven last year. Ferguson's a great tight end, another guy that I really like late in drafts. And like I said, I think Zeke and Dowdle will be enough because it's not like Pollard was that great last year. So when you look at things for Prescott, Last year, 20.7 fantasy points per game. Over 4,500 passing yards, 36 passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns. 
I think even if he regresses a little bit, he can easily still finish around that 18 to 20 point per game mark. And you're basically getting him at a discount. I mean, how often do we see the quarterback three in fantasy from the previous season just be completely pushed down rankings like that? Like I said, even a little bit of regression for Dak Prescott is not scaring me from drafting Dak Prescott at his current ADP. Overall, I think he's just a great value. And if you're waiting till the eighth round to draft your, like, I mean, if you literally are drafting the guys that we talked about or players similar, you know, at skill position spots, the first seven rounds of your draft, then you're not getting your QB one till the eighth round. I think Dak is a perfectly fine selection. Not that I don't like guys like Kyler or Jordan Love in that same range, but at the end of the day, I think overall Dak is just being way too slept on. He's a great value where he's going in drafts. That'll do it for today's video. Let me know what you guys thought of the players I went over based on their current ADP, what rounds you're able to get them. Let me know if there are other players you would rather target in those respective rounds as well down below in the comments. And of course, while you're down there, if you, if you have any fantasy football questions, redraft, dynasty, best ball, whatever you guys need, let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. With that, I will say thank you guys so much for watching and or listening. And remember, you saw it here on the catch.